Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. God is great and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the beauty of holiness. And we just, it's another day that the Lord has graced us to see. And we really, really appreciate that. Thanks be to God. And it's another opportunity for us to get into the word of the living Lord and hear what does say the Lord this evening. So um, get your Bibles, get ready, invite a friend, invite a relative, invite a co-worker, and let's get ready to get into the word of the Lord for this evening. I always I believe that God got a good word for you, something that's going to be a blessing to you. It's going to help you a lot. So just tune in, tune in, invite someone. Be you you're welcome to share. You're welcome to start watch parties if you desire to do so. Amen. Give us some likes. Give us some thumbs up. Thank God, and I'll give all of you thumbs up because thank God we all still here, and God has graced us to be here in the land of the living in our right minds. Our bodies are functioning in the perfection that he created it in. And we thank God for Sister Carol Green. Lord, the Lord bless her. And she's coming along real strong. Amen. And we just continue to lift her up in prayer and loving and praying on her with her. And we're going to pray her through. And she's going to be home pretty soon. Amen. But if you're here this evening, I want you to just uh, get your Bibles. And let's get into the word of the Lord this evening. And I don't know how long I'm going to be. I think I won't put no time frame on God no more. The last time I did that, I said I was, said I was going to be sure I had a mess up. So I'm not going to say that no more. So as long as God would take, I will try to do as much as I, uh, all he want me to do. Amen. Put it like that. Uh, so get your Bibles and get your word and let's get into the word of the living Lord right now. And we're going to uh, pray first and then we'll start our message for this evening. I love all of you. It's good to see all of you tuning in. Amen. It's good to have you, your presence here this evening. And if you feel up to it, and I would hope that you do, always invite somebody to be a part of what we are doing, a part of this word. And let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity to minister your word to these, your sheep and your lambs, to feed them with knowledge and understanding. Lord, I ask that you just speak through my mouth and think through my mind and all of you and none of me, none of me and all of you be seen and heard in Jesus name. Now, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for how you've been so great and how so good to us. And we just, we, thor we thoroughly appreciate you, Lord, in Jesus name for giving us life and that more abundantly. We thank you, Father God, for our perfect health and soundness of mind. And Lord, as we go into your word, just have your way, open the ears of your people to hear, give their hearts, give them hearts to understand what they hear and that which they hear, let it fall on the good ground of their hearts. And we'll give you all the glory, the honor and the praise and rewinder every work of the enemy, helpless, inoperable in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. We're going to continue to talk about wisdom. And I believe wisdom is a very important subject. How long I'm going to be on this, I don't know until the Lord turns me loose and we'll proceed to something else. But you can't get enough wisdom. I guarantee you that much. Uh, all of us need some more wisdom. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. And uh, God can give you wisdom in any situation. And he's willing to give you wisdom in any situation. God can give you wisdom. And, the, and I say can because you have to ask for it. In the book of James chapter 1 and verse 5, and I'm going to read from the Amplified. It said, if any of you is deficient in wisdom, if anyone is deficient in wisdom, let him ask, let him ask, of the Lord God, who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly, without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given him. But if you notice this, any of you, if any of you are deficient in wisdom, let him ask. 
You have to ask wisdom. It's almost like when you're praying, when you're praying to God, you're asking God for something. And we call the response of God, we call it answers. But many times the response that God gives us and speak back to us is wisdom, how to get it done ourselves. And he'll release that wisdom, but you got to ask for it. Now, I'm going to read a, 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 a from the Bible tonight in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 6 through 23. And that's where the majority of our stuff, our message will be coming from tonight. And I'm going to show you through this story of Nehemiah how Nehemiah didn't know how to do a lot of things, but God graced him with wisdom on how to get those things done. I'll never forget when we were renovating our facility and the AC man wanted to just give us a jacked up job and because he didn't know how to figure it out. And me and my wife put our heads together and we came together one night and God gave us wisdom how to put the condensers in the room so to have more room. They wanted to put the condenser right below the ceiling, which if I'd have walked in there as tall as I am, I'd have bumped my head on. But God gave me and her wisdom one night, and I went back and told them that this is the way it can be, and uh, that change was made, and it looked it perfect, and we just thank God. God will give you wisdom if you ask for it. This is very important that you have wisdom, especially in these days and times, in making decisions, in carrying out situations, in handling your matters, you need wisdom now like you've never needed it before. Now, let's start in the book of Nehemiah. This story here, you're going to see a lot of wisdom that, that God just released unto Nehemiah. He just kept giving him wisdom how to do different things, kept releasing stuff to him, showing him what to do, how to accomplish things. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6, 23. Uh, chapter 4, verses 6 through 23. At last, the wall was completed to half its height around the entire city. But you tell the devil, we're not going halfway. We're going all the way. For the people had worked with enthusiasm. In other words, in the King James, it said they had a mind to work. When you have a mind to work what God wants you to work, God will give you the wisdom that you need to get his work completed. I'm a witness to that. I really am. Because when we were doing our renovation, there's so much that I could talk about when we were renovating that facility that God gave me wisdom in these areas, showed me how to do things that I had no knowledge of, and he gave me the wisdom and the understanding of how to get things done, how to do things, how to see something and get and, and make sure it was corrected. And uh, But the scriptures say the people had worked with they had they worked with enthusiasm they had a desire to accomplish what god want them to accomplish see you whatever god you want from god you got to do it with enthusiasm amen you can't expect to receive anything from god half heartedly you got to be you got to have enthusiasm you got to be enthusiastic about what you are trying to accomplish because nobody's going to get behind you if you're not going to be enthusiastic about it. But if you're enthusiastic about it and you have a mind for it, God will grace you with all the wisdom that you need to accomplish anything your heart desires. And verse 7 says, But when Sambila and Tobiah and the Arabs, Ammonites, and the Ashidots, Ashdodots, heard that the work was going ahead, that the gaps in the wall of Jerusalem were being repaired, they were furious. And the enemy know that, you know, you may have some gaps in your life, but these gaps are being filled by us teaching on this word, this word, uh, godly wisdom. So we're going to fulfill the gaps. We're going to close up all the gaps with the wisdom of God. Amen. We don't, we aren't going to allow the enemy to have not even a crack to squeeze through. So we're going to close every gap of the, of the, of the enemy. We're going to close every gap that we can accomplish our goals and our, our greatest dreams. Then they said in verse eight, they all made plans. Listen at this now. They got mad with Nehemiah because they were doing and accomplishing what God gave them to do, fulfilling the vision that God gave them. They all made plans. Listen to this. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. 
See, that's what the devil does. He tries to throw you into confusion. But the wisdom I've been giving you in the past three or four weeks, your wisdom will confuse him. I'm going to show you tonight through this story of Nehemiah how that this enemy came against them to confuse them. See, when you're confused, you, you're really not thinking uh, 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 right. You, 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 your mind is going somewhere everywhere. But they were he tried to confuse uh, Nehemiah and and Jerusalem. But look at what he did now. He know he needs some wisdom now because these people come going to fight against him, and they're coming to try to confuse everybody in the camp. But what uh, in verse nine? What Nehemiah said? He said, "But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. Who gave them that wisdom?" to guard the city day and night. Who informed them that the enemy was coming against them, the fight against them, and to bring about confusion in the camp? God revealed to Nehemiah what to do to keep the enemy out. I'm revealing to you what to do to keep the enemy out of your life. If you catch hold to the wisdom of God, the enemy will have no chance in overcoming or overthrowing you or entering into your camp. Wisdom will keep the devil out of your camp. Amen. And Nehemiah said in verse 9, but we pray to our God. See, prayer will bring about wisdom. You don't know what to do. Prayer will bring about the wisdom that you need, and God will show you what to do. That's wisdom. But we pray to our God and God in the city day and night to protect ourselves. Watch this now, verse 10. Then the people of Judah began to complain. Wow. Here you go. You got the enemy over here, and now Judah's getting ready to complain. There's no wisdom there. When you start complaining, there's no wisdom there. You're going to lose the moment you start complaining. Watch what Jeremiah did. The workers also are getting tired. Listen at the complaints. And there's so much rubber to be, be moved. We will never be able to build the walls by ourselves. Now, I don't want nobody around me talking that kind of negative talk because there's no wisdom, no wisdom in that. Anytime you start talking about we'll never be able to do something, there's no wisdom in that. That's sensual wisdom. That's, that's fleshly wisdom. That's what you see with your eyes, and that's what your eyes and your mind is telling you that we'll never be able to accomplish. See, when God uh, blesses you or, show, or give you a vision of anything, it's always going to look harder than what you uh, what it is, amen? But Jesus, he's going to always give you vi wisdom how to accomplish anything that you got to accomplish. You know, whatever you're doing for God is going to require wisdom to get it done. It's not going to be easy because the enemy is going to fight against you. Whatever you believe in God for, it's going to take wisdom to get through the situation. It's going to take wisdom to accomplish your greatest goals. It's going to take wisdom for you to reach your place called there. And Jeremiah said, but we prayed to our God and God in the city day and night to protect ourselves. Then the people of Judah began to complain. Amen. The workers are getting tired. And there is so much rubble to be moved. We will never be able to build a wall by ourselves. Never get that 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 that. Uh, attitude that you'll never be able to do something. We need what we say as believers, the wisdom of God always tells us, he tells us what to say. I can do all things through Christ. That's wisdom right there. I can do all things through Christ. Jesus. Just because it look hard, it's not hard for God. God been around a long time and he done handled a whole lot of cases much more difficult than yours because God is wiser. He's always ahead of the adversary and he will always drop Wisdom in your heart so that you can accomplish what your heart desire. Remember that wisdom, with God, wisdom will overthrow the enemy's works at any given time. Verse 11 said, meanwhile, our enemies, enemies were saying, how did they know what the enemy was saying? God was getting the message back to them. Before they know what's, what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. 
That's what the enemy want to do to you. He want to swoop down on you and he want to kill your heart's desire. He want to kill your dreams. He don't want you to dream. He wants you to start doubting that what God has promised you, he'll start telling you that it's not going to happen. But when you stand on the promises of God, which is the wisdom of God, the word of God is the wisdom of God. And you stand on the promises of God, which is the wisdom of God. And all the promises of God are yea and amen. It's going to come to pass. Nobody can stop it. Amen. You need to say that with me right now. Nobody can stop me because I'm operating in the wisdom of God. Amen. The word of God is the wisdom of God. And if you're operating in the word, you're operating in wisdom. Meanwhile, when it was saying before they know what's happening, we will scoop, swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. Listen at the devil. That's, it. That's their wisdom. Now watch what God uh, deals with that situation. The Jews who lived near the enemy came and told us again and again, every time that the enemy was trying to plan something against the children of, of God, God had the spies come and tell them what the enemy was planning on doing. I'm telling you tonight what the enemy wants to do, but you're getting it, you getting an upfront information so you'll know how to deal with him before he even arrived. You'll know how to deal with him to keep you out of your home. You'll know how to deal with him to keep him out of your marriage. You'll know how to deal with him to keep him out of your finances. You'll know how to deal with him to keep him out of your health. You'll know how to deal with him to keep him off of your job because God will give you wisdom how to handle it. He'll give you wisdom what to do and what not to do, what to say and what not to say. And when you hear it in your spirit, that's God speaking to you. And it won't be loud. It'll be a little t smooth, uh, soft, uh, little voice so tender, so soft. That's God leading you. And when you do what that voice tell you to do, the enemy can't stand against you. You're going to come out more than a conqueror. See, wisdom always causes you to come out more than the conqueror. Wisdom will, if you work and live and operate in the wisdom of God, you will never lose a battle. You'll never lose a challenge. You'll never be overcome. You'll never lose uh, 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 in, in the trouble. The troubles will come, but you will always overcome the trouble because you're operating in the wisdom of God and nothing can overthrow the wisdom of God that the enemy is using. Are you with me? The Jews who live near the enemy came and told us, he said, told, me, told us again and again, they will come from all directions and attack us. Now, where do you think these answers are coming from? Where do you think these things are coming from? God is placing in these people's heart to look out for Nehemiah and, and Jerusalem. He's looking for those workers, and the enemy wants to stop the plan of God. The enemy wants to stop the plan of God in your life, but he cannot stop it. God is going to give you wisdom how to come out of that situation. God is going to give you wisdom how to handle that matter. God is going to give some of you wisdom that you've been going through some stuff. And God is going to give you wisdom how to step out of it and step into your place called there. See, destiny is, is not left up to chance. It's a choice. Are you here with me? So God gives you wisdom to step into your destiny. And the enemy cannot, will not be able to ever stop you as a child of God as long as you operate in the wisdom of God. And the word of God is the wisdom of God. Now, the next verse, verse 14, I believe it is. Then as I looked over the situation, watch what he said. Now, he looked over the situation. You got to, uh, uh, let's see how we're going to deal with this thing here. Let's see how we're going to handle it. You know I say? See, now he needs some wisdom now, but he don't need natural wisdom. He don't need fleshly wisdom. He don't need sensual wisdom, and he don't need devilish wisdom. He need a wisdom of God to manifest. He need the wisdom of God to come forth. He said, then as I looked over the situation, you ever been in, in a situation where uh, you needed some understanding you didn't know how to do. I know that's happened to me many times. You've been doing something at your house or someplace or on your car, and you didn't know how to do it right then. And you say, well, I'll just put this down for a while. And then the, and sometime during that night, maybe while you were sleeping or, or during the night you was doing something, all of a sudden something came to your mind. It was like something came to your mind. The Holy Ghost brought it to your mind. Do it like this. And you were able to accomplish. That was wisdom. God gave you wisdom how to do it and how to get it done. You just have to learn how to listen. He's always talking, but are we always listening? Amen. Watch this. And he said, then as I looked over the situation, I called together. There's wisdom. Now. I called together the nobles, 
and the rest of the people and said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. That's wisdom. He, he, in spite of how the situation looked, Nehemiah had to use wisdom in getting the people to stay focused. He said, don't be afraid of the enemy. I'm here tonight to tell you not to be afraid of the enemy. Not the enemy is afraid of you. That's why he's trying to attack you. He's afraid of you. Just stand fast and hold fast to God's un, not, not God's unchanging hand because you don't even know how to hold God's hand. Just hold fast to God's word, which is his wisdom. You hold fast to that word and that situation that you're in, you're coming out of it. It may take a little while sometime, but everything don't happen immediately. But you hold fast. The scriptures say hold fast to your confessions of faith. Hold fast to the wisdom of God's word. And your situation is going to be uh, uh, bought to zip, zero, nothing. Don't let nothing move you. Use God's wisdom. Then, and watch this. He said, then as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and say to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. All those of you that are listening to me tonight, do not be afraid of what you're going or what you're being confronted with. Do not let, allow fear to operate in your life because you're not going to go under. You're not going to lose. You're going to come out more than a conqueror because you're operating in the wisdom of God. God is always wiser than the devil. Amen. The devil never could out, out with God. Watch this now. They say, remember the Lord who is great and glorious. The Lord is great and glorious. And he'll fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your home. God will fight for all that belong to you. That's wisdom. God will fight for all that belongs to you. You don't have to fight. You fight the good fight of faith in the wisdom of God's word. And God, that scripture says, God will fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. You can't get it no better than that. That covers everything, your life, your health, everything. God, in his wisdom of God's word, it covers everything. God will cover you. You are fully covered. Like some insurance policies, they call it full coverage. You got full coverage from the from the head to the toe, the inside and the outside, mind, body, soul, and spirit, just operate in the wisdom of God. And in verse 15, say, when our enemies heard that we knew of their plans and that God had frustrated them, listen at this, <laughs> God frustrated the enemy. God is going to frustrate some situations that the enemy is bringing against you all. Frustrate him. He says he's going to frustrate the enemy. We all return to our work on the wall. God started frustrating the enemy. When you walk in the wisdom of God, God is going to frustrate the enemy. And you can go back and start doing what you've been doing. Amen. But use the wisdom of the word. And then Nehemiah said, but from then on, here's wisdom. He said, only half my men worked while the other half stood guard with spears. Everybody couldn't work. Somebody had to stand guard. That's wisdom. Putting everybody out there, everybody couldn't stand guard and everybody couldn't work. So they took turns. He said, uh, but from then on, only half my men worked while the other half stood guard with spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. The leaders stationed themselves behind the people of Judah who are building the wall. So God gave him wisdom how to keep on building the wall in spite spite of the threats that they were getting from Tambalat and Tobias knows, God still gave them wisdom how to continue to build the wall and also be protected as they were building the wall. Wisdom, God will give you the wisdom that you need. The verse 17 say the laborers carried on their work with one hand supporting their Lord and one hand holding a weapon. Who do you think told them how to do that? God, that's wisdom. And all the builders had a sword belted to their side. The trumpeter stayed with me to sound the alarm. God so told, told Nehemiah, you keep the trumpeter over here with you. So in case something come up, you can sound the alarm. And we, wherever we hear the sound of that alarm, that's where we'll run to. 
That's wisdom. God gave them wisdom how to keep on building this wall when the enemy was trying to cause them to stop building. He said, then I explained to the nobles and officials and all the people, the work is spread out and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. When you hear, I just say that, when you hear the blast of the trumpet, rush to wherever it is sound, then our God will fight for us. That's wisdom. He said, we work early and we work late. They, they, it's around the clock. Because they're trying to accomplish a goal. They're trying to fulfill a, 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 a goal, trying to accomplish what God wants to do to build a gate, the um, wall. And God is stepping in with them, giving them wisdom what to do, even though the enemy is fighting against them. Listen to this. The wisdom of God has the ability to expose the traps of the enemy. Did not God expose the traps of the enemy that was coming against them to stop them from building a wall? The wisdom of God has the ability to expose the traps of the enemy. Before the enemy do anything to you or try to accomplish something, a goal, try to accomplish something against you, God will expose your enemy. Wisdom, will, the wisdom of God will expose your enemies. Or oh, you're listening to me. When you tap into God's wisdom, you're going to forever be a guaranteed winner. The wisdom of God will always give you an edge over your adversaries and your opposition. Or oh, you're hearing me. The wisdom of God will always give you an edge over your adversaries and all your oppositions. Wisdom, listen to this, wisdom is better than weapons of war. Because you can have weapons of war and don't have nobody to have no wisdom to know how to, how to uh, uh, maneuver things. And you can have all the weapons and don't have somebody to have some wisdom to show you what to do with the weapon. You're going to lose the battle and the person that didn't have as many uh, weapons as you will end up with your weapons. So the wisdom is better than weapons of war. Wisdom is better than a 38. Wisdom is better than a, a nine millimeter. Wisdom is better than a shotgun. But one sin of the scripture says destroys much good. Wisdom, that's the part. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. My God, isn't that awesome? Wisdom of God will always give you an advantage. It will always give you an edge over your adversary, over all the oppositions that are coming against you. All you need is the wisdom of God. Whew. Watch this. I'm going to Zechariah 4, 6. Thank you, Lord. Then he said to me this. Addition of the bowl to the candlestick, causing it to yield a ceaseless supply of, supply of oil from the olive trees, is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, not by might. Listen at this. I told you now. We need, we need wisdom, not by not no weapons of war. Amen. Wisdom is better than the weapons of war. He said, not by might, nor by your power, but by my spirit. Of whom the all is the symbol of, says the Lord of hosts, by my spirit of wisdom. By wisdom, God say, wisdom is mightier than the greatest of army. Wisdom can overthrow an army. Remember that little man in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, I believe it was, the scripture, the scripture said it was this poor, wise man. But he had enough wisdom to overthrow a whole army. And the only reason they didn't remember them was because he's poor, but God put him in the Bible. Wisdom is greater. Whew. Wisdom is greater than weapons of war. So you don't have to go out here and try to be putting no roots and voodoo and all that kind of stuff on people. You all you need is some wisdom, and wisdom will help you win the battle. Wisdom will help you overcome the situation. He said, "When thou passest through," this is uh, in the book of Isaiah forty-three one and two. He said, uh, uh, "But now thus saith the Lord." Are y'all with me thus far? But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. See, wisdom is going to always tell you, don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou mine. You belong to God. He said, when you pass through the waters, you're going to pass through some waters. You're going to have some spiritual warfare. He said, I'll be with you. 
That go with them. I'm going to be with you. You're looking for somebody else to be with you. The best person to be with, best individual to be with you is God. He said, and through the rivers, and, and they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame uh, 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 get on your clothes. You can't even be burned. So God commands us not to fail because the wisdom of God is available to help us pass through the rivers unhurt. What did he say? When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. God commands us not to be fearful because the wisdom of God is available to help us pass through the rivers of water unhurt. This wisdom that could divide the flames of fire in times of the three Hebrew boys will ensure a way of escape for you in the midst of your fire. Wisdom will get you out of every fire that you get in. Because even the fire is not stronger than the wisdom of God. So fear not, you can defeat all the devil's oppositions that comes against your life and your livelihood. You can defeat anything that the enemy throws against you with the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God is the word of God. If you're using the word of God, you're using the wisdom of God. Oh. <laughs> When you operate in divine wisdom, you are able to do exploits beyond your human abilities. The wisdom of God will also manifest exploits and mighty works. Look at Matthew 13, 20, 54. I hope I'm not screaming. And when he was coming to his own country, what did I just say? The wisdom of God will also uh, manifest exploits and mighty works. Matthew 13, 54. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, when had this man, this wisdom and these mighty works? See, wisdom produced mighty works. Did you see that? Where this man, when had this man, this wisdom and these mighty works? The wisdom of God will uh, manifest exploits and mighty works. It takes wisdom to do the exploits, to manifest exploits. It takes wisdom to do mighty works of God. Because what you need to do the mighty works has got to come from God because God is the only one that's able to give you that wisdom to, to do the mighty works. Jesus performed mighty works. He did mighty works because the scripture tells us right here, these people saw wisdom. Which had this man this wisdom? They had to know something. He had something that nobody else had. And the wisdom that he had caused him to do mighty works. Believers, church, God got the same wisdom that he sh will share with you so that you can do mighty works and, and see mighty works accomplished even in your life, in your family, in your situation, in your finances, in your marriage, in your home. You can do mighty works as well. Because Jesus said the works. Notice what he said. The well, works that I do, you should do also. Look at what that scripture said. They were astonished and said, Whence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Which of this man got wisdom and doing mighty works? And Jesus already told the works that we do. In other words, the mighty works that he did is the same works that you and I can do because he will give us the wisdom which will cause, which will manifest uh, great exploits and great works, mighty works. Whew. He didn't leave you empty-handed. He didn't. Whatever Jesus did, he said, you can do it too. Are y'all here with me? Mighty works is a direct result of divine wisdom. Mighty works is a, a, a direct result of mighty wisdom. What's this? Divine wisdom, brother. You are able, as a believer, to produce results that will be revealed to the natural man and cannot be denied. These people could not deny that Jesus has something that they didn't have. And they recognized that he had wisdom. And also they recognized that he was doing mighty works through the wisdom that he had. Lord, I thank you for wisdom. 
Y'all ought to give God a praise wish for some wisdom. Just, just hit them hearts up there. That's praising you. And we'll just signify that as God. You're praising God for, for empowering you and doing you with wisdom and strength and giving you the wisdom that you need in the present situation that you are facing, that you're going to come out of that situation more than a conqueror. You're going you're gonna to always be the head and not the tail. You're going to always be above and not beneath. But it takes wisdom to remain there. It takes wisdom to accomplish those things. It takes wisdom to overcome the mighty. So you are able to produce results that will that will be revealed, listen at me, that will be revealed to the natural man and cannot be denied. Wisdom can produce a peaceful life, peace that passes all understanding. It takes wisdom to have that. Wisdom can produce business ideas. Wisdom can to produce uh, financial ideas. Wisdom can uh, 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 produce outstanding financial increase in ideas. Everything about you is just unique. And most people you leave in awe. You'd be surprised how many people you leave in awe. Some of them's looking at you, watching you, been watching you for years, wondering how you've been accomplished, what you've been accomplished, how you've been doing what you've been doing. You become a wonder to them. Wisdom will cause you to be a wonder to the world. I wonder how they got that. You ever, you ever, <laughs> I wonder how they got that, the wisdom of God. I wonder where they got that from. They must be stealing from their job. No, I don't have to steal. I got wisdom that know how to get things done and how to accomplish stuff and how to get things into my possession. I wonder where they got that money from. I wonder how they got that house. And we working on the same job, making the same amount of money. Yeah, but you, we don't have the same amount of wisdom. You don't have the wisdom that I have. And the wisdom that I have will show me how to get the home that I want. You'll be surprised how many people are wondering about you. You always wanted to be a wonder. You're a wonder. <laughs> All right. Now, John 3.31 in the NLT reads as thus, He who comes from above, from heaven, is, above, is far above all others. Where does wisdom come from? Wisdom comes from above. And the wisdom that you and I have, this wisdom is above all other wisdom. It's above sensual wisdom. It's above that, 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 that uh, 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 devilish wisdom. The wisdom we have is above all wisdom. He who comes from above, from heaven, is far above all others. The wisdom that we have is far above the wisdom that anybody else can have. There's nobody got more wisdom than God, and Christ is in you the wisdom of God. So don't allow anybody to make you feel bad about yourself because you don't have a PhD, a DDD, a master's degree, a BA, whatever it is. Don't let nobody make you feel bad about yourself because God has given you, listen at this, he who comes from above heaven is for above all others. Wisdom that we have comes from above. So that wisdom is above all others. Watch this now. He who comes from the earth belongs to the earth. People that are in the earth, they belong to the earth. And watch this scripture. And talks the earth language. We don't, we, isn't it amazing? You and I can talk both languages. We can talk kingdom language. And there's time where you have to talk to some people in, in their language. But look at this. He who comes from the earth belongs to the earth and, and talks the language of the earth. He, his wisdom is from the earth. His words, watch this. His words are from an earthly standpoint. His wisdom is from an earthly standpoint. He who comes from heaven is far above all others, far superior to all others in prominence and in excellence and in intelligence and in wisdom. Boy, you can't get it better than that. You should be shouting by now. And my God, you should be laying out on the floor in your house, rolling over. My God, my God. Watch this now. Let me go on. Let me finish this up. Let me finish. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. For who? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me do it like this. But me and you, the scriptures say, who can know the mind of Christ? But you and I as believers, our minds are capable of functioning the same way that Jesus' mind did. Because let, let me show you how. Let me show you how. Full of wisdom. Uh, our minds is capable of functioning the same way that Jesus' mind functioned. Remember what the scriptures say. Let the same, you got to let it now. Let the same mind that was in Christ, let that same mind 
And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus was full of wisdom. Let that same mind, let that same wisdom be in you. So from Jesus and through Jesus, we can operate in the same wisdom that Jesus operated in. Are y'all here with me? We are no different than Jesus. He said, I go, and, and, and when I go to the Father, I'm up there. I'm, 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 I'm your advocate. I'm your, I'm your intercessor. I'm your mediator. So he grants us his wisdom to accomplish and do the same works that he has done. He said, the works that I've done, and you should do greater works. Because the works now you have to do, I'm inside you. And I'll, all you have to do is pull on the wisdom that's in you. And you can accomplish even greater things than I have accomplished. Let's stay focused on the wisdom of God and see how God manifests in your life. The scriptures say, for all things originate with him and come from him. All things live through him and all things uh, uh, sent to end and tend to consummate and to end in him. To him be glory forever. Everything is about Jesus. All the wisdom we need, God said, I'll give this to you. All you have to do is ask, and I'll give it to you liberally. I'll give it to you liberally. Anytime you need wisdom for a situation, pull on the wisdom of God. And Jesus said, I'll release that wisdom liberally. But you have to meditate in this word because the word is wisdom. And when you're meditating the word of God, you, if you don't meditate in the word, you don't, you don't read the word, you won't know what the wisdom of the word is talking about. You won't even know what it's saying. You won't even know what to say. So you got to get the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart so that I don't say the wrong thing out of my mouth. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Thy wisdom have I hid in my heart. Thy wisdom has I fed my spirit so that I need to pull on wisdom. I can pull it up out of me at any given time. I'm a wisdom carry. I'm a word carry. I'm a wisdom carry. The word of God is the wisdom of God. And I'm a wisdom carry because I carry the word. Father, I thank you and I praise you for allowing me to talk to your people tonight. It's not by our power nor by our might, but it's by your spirit, saith the Lord, your spirit of wisdom. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for just allowing us to tap into your wisdom, to be able to pull on your wisdom at any given time. We thank you because your wisdom is pleasant. Your wisdom is pure. Your wisdom called produces exploits. Your wisdom produces mighty works. And Lord, help us to govern ourselves according to your wisdom, to be, in a, be very attentive to hearing your voice as you speak to us, because we know that every time you speak, you're releasing wisdom into our spirit, into our ears. And Father, we thank you for allowing us to hear that small, still voice, to be in complete tune in, with you that we can hear your voice at any given time, irregardless of how loud the enemy is talking, that we can still hear your voice in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for those that's under the hearing of my voice, and I pray, Lord, that the word fell on the good ground of their hearts and something was saved that will help them, that will have strengthened them, that will pull them up out of, the, out of despair and out of fear and out of doubt in Jesus' name, and that they hold fast to their confession of faith, that they hold fast to the promises of God. And Father, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise for strengthening them and dropping the wisdom in them right now. That one that need wisdom for the situation that they are confronted with, drop wisdom in their spirit at this very moment, and I'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Neighbor, if you're listening to me, and you want to tap into this wisdom, this wisdom that I'm talking about is only for the children of God, only for the born again believers. It's not just for anybody and everybody. You got to be connected to the wisdom source in order for the wisdom to flow through you and to you. So if you out there now, you're hearing me, this wisdom that I'm talking about, it can become yours if you will allow it to. If you're tired of your life going around like a merry-go-round, if you want to see change in your life for this year, 2021, you're tired of go, living the life you lived in 2020 and 2019 and 2018 and 2017. You want to see something different. You want to see something change in your life. Well, this is your opportunity. All you need to do is receive Christ 
into your heart as your Lord, as your Savior, and your Master. And Jesus will come and sit upon the throne of your heart and rule and reign in your life, and your life will never be the same. So just repeat this prayer after me if you want to give your life to Christ and you want to see change take place in your life. Repeat this after me. Say, so, Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I'm asking you to come into my heart, sit upon the throne of my heart, rule and reign in my life. I receive you now as my Lord, as my master, as my soon coming king. I believe right now that I am saved. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to help me. Help me to overcome the forces of evil that comes against me. And I promise you, I will live for you from this day forward. And I thank you again for saving me. And I believe I'm saved. Amen. All right, neighbor, there it is. And I pray that a word was spoken, something dropped in your heart that will help it and encourage you. Amen. Until the next time, God is great and greatly to be praised. And remember, don't call it the way you see it. Call it the way you want it to be. Thank you for joining in with us. We'll see you on Sunday uh, morning at 1030. God bless you. I love you. And remember, don't call it the way you see it. Call it the way you want it to be. God bless.